Welcome to the Mallard Duck Felting Tutorial. This is June's Bird of the Month for 2022. So here are the colors we'll be using today and some of our supplies. Make sure to watch the How to Wet Felt video if you haven't yet. You can find that on my YouTube page under Tutorials. I'm not going to be showing you how to do the whole wet felting process today, so make sure you watch the video. So we're going to start with our dark navy blue. And we're going to have the first layer with the fibers going from left to right. So you just want to pull off thin pieces of roving and lay them out um, just slightly overlapping um, next to each other. Just very thin layers. Now for layer two, Fibers will be going up and down as we alternate each layer. I'm going to throw in the lighter blue and then a little bit of the navy blue, just making sure to cover this whole layer, but still just thin pieces so it's not too thick. And then for our third and final layer, we're going to do the same thing. Use the lighter blue and mix in the navy as well. The piece I'm working on, it's um, not, not quite 12 inches wide, probably about 10 inches. And then we're going to put in some white and a little bit of black to add some depth and reflection into the water that we're working on. And then we'll start wetting it down before we add the outline of our duck just so it's a little bit flatter surface. And when we add the wool for the duck, it's easier to work with. So I'm using my hot soapy water and soaking down the wool entirely. And then I use my bar soap and I gently glide it over the surface. And I'm just felting it lightly, just a little bit so it all sticks together before we add the duck. If you aren't using a bar of soap, just make sure your water is soapy. I use a little bit more soap than most people for wet felting, but it works for me. Now, if you're using the dark navy um, included in the kits for the mallard duck, it did bleed a little bit of the color. The mill must have not fully exhausted this dye, but it didn't bleed enough to distort any of the other colors. So make sure when you pull your mesh off that it doesn't pull up any of the other fibers and it's all laying flat. And then we're going to start laying out the shape of our duck. So I did include a template so you can have an idea of the shape and size of the duck in the kit. So the bluish green there on the top, that is the head. And then the lighter green, we're going to use these two colors in layers to give it the reflective green blue color of the mallard duck's head and then the brown will be the breast of the bird and then we're going to use gray to shape out the rest of the body now this is just a rough outline that we do um, for the wet felting and then we'll add the rest of the detail when we needle felt and then just a little bit of black at the back of the bird near the tail. And then we're going to lay out the same colors real thin underneath the bird. So this will be the reflection in the water. So just using real thin layers so you can see through to the other colors underneath. And that will give the reflection in the water. Now we can start wet felting. So we're going to wet this down again. You're not going to need as much water this time since you already wetted down the background. And then we'll start gently felting. This is sped up. So remember, I'm very gently doing this just back and forth. And you can slowly increase the agitation. And once you've felted it with your hand so it's not pulling up from the background, then you can start the rolling process. 
And the rolling process is fully detailed in the How to Wet Felt video on my YouTube page. And we'll roll. And after the rolling process, make sure you do the pinch test to make sure the layers are fully felted. After I roll, I usually felt it again with my hands um, more vigorously to make sure it's all felted. And then you can start the folding process. I use a couple different methods for folding, which you can see in the How to Wet Felt video. After your full process is done, Make sure to thoroughly rinse out your project and let it sit and dry completely before we start needle felting. So for needle felting, we're going to use some of the same colors plus um, a yellow. And I have a couple felting needles. I use a multi-needle tool and generally a 36 triangle and a 40 spiral. So we're going to start by working on the bill of the duck. So I'm blending together white and yellow. So if you haven't seen me do this before, you lay the two colors on top of each other and then pull them apart at the ends repeatedly and lay them back on top of each other until the colors are blended together. It's an easy way to blend two colors quickly. So for the bill, this is the bottom edge. And then we add in the top. So it comes down right off of the head and nice glides down. You can use your template for an idea. You can use your template just to look at, or you can even cut it out and help with the shape. So you're going to make a triangle, a thin triangle with the beak. You just want it to glide down off the top of the head in a nice smooth angle. And that comes straight out from the head on the bottom. So I'm adding a little bit more to the top of the head and just adjusting as I'm looking at the picture I'm using. And you can do the same with your template. So working on the bill here, the top of the bill does, when it comes out from the head, kind of comes down and then goes out a little bit flatter because the tip of the bill is more flat than pointed. And I'm using a little bit of black to make just a line to distinguish the top and bottom of the beak. And then they have a little um, tip on their beak, a little black tip. And then the hole on the beak there, that is part of where they breathe. It's kind of like a, um, a nostril type of thing. And the bottom half of the beak here, um, I used a little bit of the brown and blended it with my yellow. More yellow than brown, just to give it a little bit darker color. Just shades it a little bit. And then I used a little bit more white and added it as a highlight there behind the nostril. So we're using some of this emerald green color and the darker bluish green color blending together to give the reflective look of the mallard duck's head. So I do just layers of the two colors real thin to get that effect. For the eye, it's kind of like a pointed oval shape. And we'll just use the black for that. And I decided to add a little bit more to the back of the head to make the head just a little bigger. I didn't, I didn't think it was big enough here. You don't necessarily need to add more if you think it looks good and your template matches pretty well. So for this eye, it's kind of the shape you would use for a human eye most of the time. Just the point points on both ends with the black. And then I'm going to make an outline with white just a little tiny bit. 
on the outside of the eye. And I'm not going all the way around. Kind of leave a space in between parts of the white. And then I'm going to add the reflection in the eye with a little bit of white. Usually do two. One in the upper portion of the eye. And then a little smaller one in the bottom corner. Now to give the eye more depth. I'm going to add some darker, that darker bluish green color around the eye, mostly in the front of the back of the eye and just below it. This will make it look like the eye is more set into the head like it is. And then you want to blend it out into the rest of the color of the head. And to do that, you can use just these real thin pieces of that bluish green. And then at the base of the neck here, we're going to add that ring of white that they have around the neck. Just a little bit of white. And then we can start working on the rest of the body. So the brown of the breast comes down from the neck and around. And then once it hits the wing, the wing is more of a grayish color with a little bit of brown hues in spots. So I'm going to blend gray and brown together using the same method I used earlier for the white and the yellow. And I'm going to work on this wing here, the lower part um, of the body actually we're going to use this gray for and then the back end they have uh, more of black for the tail feathers and then they have a strip of white feather right there as well There's actually this little feather that comes and it curls around. And that kind of sets underneath of the wing tips once we add the wings later. Very interesting little feature on ducks. So this part is actually the wing. So the bottom gray part we added is part of the main body for the most part. And this upper part is the wing. So I started with a darker brown at the base of the wing and then I'm going to go lighter towards the top. So I used the brown and then I used the blended gray and brown and extended the wing. You can see the wing tip there is now above that little curled feather in the back. And I'm blending more gray and brown. So to give that lighter color, I still have a little bit of brown blended in it, but not as much for the colors towards the top. And then I'm adding a little bit lighter color to blend in just real thin layers. Usually I use thin pieces of wool so I can still see the colors underneath. Makes it a lot easier for blending. And then use a little bit of the darker gray and brown blending. And we'll just make a sneak peek of the other wing on the other side of the body. That's that darker piece past the gray I'm working on right now. And now we're using a little bit of white and gray to give a little bit more highlight to the top of the wing. And the other little bit of white is a 
peek on the other side of the tail, the other side of the bird there. Just finishing up a few details here and we'll be just about done with our piece. Decided to change the color a little bit here, add in a little bit of darker with some white. And there, that is our finished piece. So thanks for joining me for the Mallard Duck Felting tutorial. We will see you next time. If you have any questions, you can post them in the comments here on the video. Thank you. Happy felting.